What are you talking about? I'm the one who took the business deal. My boss lied as if under his breath. This big ticket deal was unquestionably a new deal that I had taken. Is he trying to get the credit? Tim's words and actions sent chills down my spine. My name is Jeremy. I've been a salesman for an office supply company for six years. I'm still not very good at making sales dives to get new customers. But I have to do it, because the company sets me a quota. The last one to get a quota this month will be fired. Tim, the section manager, said with a grin during the morning meeting. Tim doesn't have that kind of authority. He's just taking it easy because the boss is on a business trip. Everyone in the room was whispering to each other. Tim is not very good with computers, and he often blames his subordinates. The other day, he was making a fuss about his computer breaking down. It just wasn't turned on. I tried to explain to him, but he was upset and said it was because I was not good at explaining. But he was a good liar, and the manager loved him. Jeremy, you're a candidate to be fired for poor sales. Jimmy pointed at me. My company is an individual player type of sales, not a team. The sales rankings are posted around the department, and this month, I was the lowest. Over the past few years, I have begun to think that I am not suited for sales. This has lowered my motivation and my sales are going down. Tim is always telling me, All you have to do is make the sale. But I can't do that. The fact that a product is expensive does not necessarily mean that it's good. If they are not satisfied, it's just a pushy sales pitch. I rebelled. Salespeople are only interested in making the numbers. Go sell it to them, even if you have to make them cry and feel sorry for you. Tim said, I've thought many times about quitting, but I had overcome a tough job haunting process to get a job at this company. I couldn't quit so easily when I hadn't even decided on my next job. I sighed but I got my heavy back and went out to make the rounds. I went into a small real estate company with nothing better to do, and the president of the company listened to me. He told me that he had been using the same chair for decades, but it had not broken. I recommended a chair that my company has been selling for a long time. To be honest, the new one was more expensive, but I thought it would be better if it was similar to the chair he had been using. Then, the president said, You're a good salesman. You're listening to the other party well. Good luck. I was happy to hear that. Just those words alone were enough to move my heart. The president also gave me an unexpected opportunity. I'm sorry. I could only buy a chair. I'll introduce you to someone I know. You might want to contact him since he seems to be looking for office supplies. He introduced me to a company that imports and wholesale swatches. He is the president of a real estate company, so he has a strong local network. I thanked the president repeatedly and contacted the company the next day. Thanks to the president's words that I was a good salesman, I was able to set up an appointment right away. We are relocating our headquarters and need to replace some of our office supplies. We wanted to focus on functionality, but keep the price range low. Gina, the sales representative, told me. Gina is a woman older than me. She happened to be a senior who had graduated from the same university with the same undergraduate degree. We got into a lively conversation about college. Of course. It was not only personal talk, but we also proceeded with business negotiations. I'm afraid I'm going to exceed my budget with a manufacturer I've been working with. So, I'm looking for a new contractor. I've gotten a few coats, but I'm not sure how long it will take. Gina said with a troubled look in her face. 
This is going to be a speedy game for us to out with the other companies. I'll get you a code as soon as I can, I said and arranged another appointment with Gina. I returned to the office and reported to Tim that the business meeting was about to go ahead. It's going to be a big deal. You're doing a great job. I thought he praised me. He asked me in detail how I came to the point where I was ready to start sales. I told him how I met the president of the real estate company. When he heard the end of the story, he said, Hmm, and turned away. I wanted to tell him to ask me if he wasn't interested, but he was my boss, so I held my ground. My next appointment with Gina was in two days. I wanted to make it in time before signing a contract with another company. I worked until the last train while making do with our nutritional drinks and managed to make it on time. I went to the client company with a quotation in materials. Gina's boss, George, the general manager of the general affairs department, was also there. I immediately began to present the product. Thank you for getting on with it right away. You have fulfilled our requests very well. Please, let us proceed with the business. Really? Thank you very much. I thank the general manager profusely. I never thought that a chance encounter could bring me such a good opportunity. I might be number one in sales this month. As I return to the office, my head suddenly starts throbbing. It was as if fatigue had overtaken me. I left work early that day and took the next day off. I never thought that something like that could happen while I was absent. I regretted taking the day off. When I returned to work, I found that Grant, the general manager, was there. He must have returned from his business trip yesterday. I approached him to report a major business meeting. Before I could open my mouth, the manager said to me in a low voice, I heard that you have the lowest sales this month, and you have refused to assist him with the business meeting he had set up. You're not doing well, and you can't even listen to your boss, so I have no choice but to fire you. I froze at the manager's comment. I had just closed a big business deal, and now I was fired. I've had major business deals. There's no way I'm at the bottom of the sales list. As I was desperately trying to explain myself, Tim came to me. What are you talking about? I'm the one who got the big deal. Tim told him the story of how he met the president of the real estate company and how he got the big deal. It was as if it were his own story. Witnessing Tim lying under his breath sent chills down my spine. It was a horror story. If sales are at their lowest, I asked him to at least assist me. He refused, saying he didn't want me to do chores. I told the manager that I couldn't handle it anymore. Tim sighed exaggerately and looked at me. We'll talk about your future at a later date. The director took one look at me and went away. Then, Tim looked at me and smiled. Thanks for all your hard work. I'll take over all the business meetings. He lightly tapped me on the shoulder. With those words, I realized everything. He was going to take the credit from me from the start. He wanted me to do all the troublesome work, such as preparing quotations and documents. He must have wanted to steal the business when the deal was finalized. You are... I was so angry that my hands were shaking. Are you gonna resort to violence? Don't use such barbaric methods. Use your words. It's just sales. Tim provoked me. If I let him provoke me and put my hands on him, I would complete the lose. Trying to calm down, I looked around me. My co-workers watched our exchange with bated breath. Many must have seen me working late, but there's no one to cover for me. After six years here, this is what I'm worth. 
No matter how much I appeal to the director now, I bet he will believe Tim's story more than mine. I have no choice but to give up. I'm not going to give up now. At a time like this, I remember the face of Gina, the person in charge. I remember that we had graduated from the same university and we had a lot of fun. Then, it hit me. That's right. He must have felt weird because I started laughing all by myself. Are you finally losing your mind? Tim was pulling his head back. I pulled a face. I gave up on the business meeting. I'll leave the rest to you. I said to him, and I managed to hold back my laughter. And then, I added, I would rather quit the job myself than be fired. I'll start using my pay time off tomorrow. I'll hand over the business meeting to you. Is that okay? I told him all at once about my decision to leave the company. Was Tim defeated by my spirit? That's fine. But make sure you get all the data together. He then quickly went back to his desk. About the data. I was starting to explain. But Tim waved his hand and said he didn't need it. I'll know it when I see it. You're wasting your time. Are you sure you want to do this? I asked just to be sure, but he said I was being persistent. I knew Tim would say so. I knew, because he always looked over the finished documents in a cursory manner, when he checked them. Then, I acted quickly. First, I went through the procedures for getting paid and resigning from the company. Since there were not so many sales recently, there were no projects to be handed over to someone else, except for the big business deal. I couldn't help but smile as I packed up my belongings. It's going to be tough for Tim tomorrow, isn't it? I muttered to myself so that no one could hear me. That was how I left the company I had worked for for six years. The next day, I was sound asleep, not caring what time it is. I looked at my watch and saw that it was already noon. I was supposed to have a business meeting this afternoon. I reached for my cell phone and saw the screen glowing with an incoming call. As I picked up the phone, I heard a shout. What the hell do you think you're doing? Your data is only Spanish? Tim realized that all the data on my computer was in Spanish. He seemed to be in a panic. I don't know which data is for the business meeting. Get out of the office right now! It's hilarious to imagine Tim panicking. I'm sorry, sir. I'm back at my parents' house right now, and it's not within immediate return distance. Yesterday, I was already back here, and it's a few hours away by plane. Even if he had asked me to come, I was not close enough to go right away. Huh? Tim is angry, but continues. As you may know, I have been studying Spanish since I was a student, so I'm pretty confident when it comes to Spanish. What on earth are you talking about? I spoke slowly to him, who was in a panic. I really wanted to get a job where I can make use of my Spanish, but my job search didn't go as smoothly as I had hoped. I had to apply for jobs in various industries. Then, I finally got a job at this company. I had to work for a long time, so I didn't have much opportunity to speak Spanish. So I decided to train myself to at least keep my writing skills up. I was inputting data in Spanish. My company's sales style is based on individual play. I can manage the data in a way that I can understand it. It was not a problem for me to write in Spanish because I was not going to show it to anyone. So when you took over, I was going to translate it and give it to you. I thought about telling you about the translation software, but you refused, saying it was a waste of time. You were the one who said I didn't need to explain. Tim became even more irritated by my laid-back tone. Just come to the office. He was adamant. You can translate the data. I have translation software on my computer. What translation software? I don't know. 
I don't have time, so I can't even ask my subordinate to do it. Hearing Tim's panicked voice, I wanted to say that he was indeed incompetent, but I held back. Then, I casually mentioned Gina. She's the person in charge on the other end, but she's from Mexico, so she must be fluent in Spanish. He seemed to have an idea at my words. Tim said, You should have told me that quickly, and hung up the phone. I couldn't stop laughing at Tim's impatience. Later that day, I called Gina to ask her how the meeting went. We had exchanged contact information because we were schoolmates in college. Tim, looking like he was in a panic, showed me his computer screen. All he would say was, read this. It's disgusting. I giggle at Gina's words. So, they didn't even prepare the documents for the meeting, and just threw them to the other party. And what about the screen Tim showed me? Tim showed them a screen full of documents of other companies with whom I had done business in the past. On the day of the meeting, he was accompanied by my department manager to discuss the conclusion of the contract. He wondered why he was frantically showing them the computer screen. What does it say? Gina was asked by her boss George, and answered honestly, although she was puzzled. It has information about other companies. Tim turned pale at Gina's comment. Tim, what's the meaning of this? If you don't have the information, explain it verbally. Tim was pressed by the director, but there was no way he could explain it because he didn't know what it was about. He probably thought that as long as he had the data, he would be able to handle the situation. Tim was at a loss for words. Before he knew it, he was no longer in charge. Gina must have sent something. What happened to you, by the way? The president of the real estate company that introduced us to you said he wanted to meet with you. There was a beaming smile on his face too, she said. From the looks of Grant, I'd say Tim is finished. Maybe he'll call you later too. Gina laughed into the phone. Then, the prediction came true, and Tim called in angrily. You've embarrassed me. I was told by my department head that not only am I losing credibility, but I'm getting punishment. You took credit for your subordinate's work, and there's no trust in you. You're lucky you only got to pay a cut. Tim's voice grew even louder, as if my words had added fuel to the fire. I won't allow you to just resign and run away. From now on, I will strictly supervise you. Even so, I had already completed the resignation procedures and had already found my next job. When I told Gina that I had resigned, she asked me if I would like to join their company. Apparently, they were short of salespeople because they had expanded their business. She said that with my sales and language skills, I would be an immediate asset to the company, even if the products we handle are different. I will resign as planned once I've used up my paid time off. I don't want to work for a boss who takes credit for my work anymore. I could see Tim Finch on the phone as I said it clearly. It's too late for regrets. With that, Tim hung up the phone. Although I felt good about the situation with Tim, I had one regret. I was still misunderstood by the director. I just couldn't accept that. I decided to report the details of the events leading up to the big business meeting by email. Please check with other employees to see if there may be similar instances. If nothing is done, I will take the appropriate steps. Then. I sent the email. The only appropriate course of action would be to consult with the Human Resources Department. A few days later, I received an email from the department manager asking to speak to me directly. I went to the designated cafe and found the manager sitting there with a tired look on his face. He asked around to the other employees. There were several employees who said that Tim had intercepted their business meeting 
but they could only cry themselves to sleep. One after another, hands went up, and the commotion grew louder. Tim was suspended from work for the time being. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you and told that you were fired. So please don't make things worse. With these words, the general manager handed me an envelope. I guess it's a hush money. The envelope was thick. I felt like I was being bribed. So I pushed the envelope back. No, this is a bonus for getting us a big business deal. I decided to take it. I heard that Tim had been suspended from work and could no longer be reached. He may have run away because he didn't want to be scolded by his boss. If he is still unreachable after the suspension and continues to be absent without leave, he will be subject to disciplinary dismissal. Tim is the kind of person who takes credit for others' work and can tell lies with ease. But he seems to be mentally fragile. I don't know what happened to Tim, but I thought he was on the run. I asked the director if I should translate the data. He said it was okay, that he would have someone else to do it. I was relieved to hear that, since I was concerned about the deal. I'm now in a new job and learning a new trade. Good luck, our future number one salesman. Gina calls out to me whenever she sees me in the company. For the sake of those who accept me, I will continue to do my best here.